सर क्विज का फाइनल कर लो डियर स्टूडेंट्स यू आर वेलकम इन दिस क्लास नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस मैनेजमेंट ऑफ इंसेक्ट पेस्ट इन राइस यस्टरडे वी हैव सीन मैनेजमेंट ऑफ डिजीजेस एंड यू नो इंसेक्ट पेस्ट आर क्वाइट इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज दे काज रिडक्शन इन ईल्ड एंड अल्टीमेटली फार्मर्स डू नॉट गेट राइट अमाउंट ऑफ प्रॉफिट if they remain unmanaged or uncontrolled so overall in case of rice or maybe for any other crops uh, there can be seven ways of pest insect pest injury to plants tissue consumers there can be certain insect which consume the tissues uh, defoliator in case of rice it can be your uh, this uh, rice leaf folder leaf folder or leaf roller it eats your chlorophyll and tissues of the leaves then leaf senescence accelerator like plant hopper hoppers plant hoppers suck the sap of the plant we'll discuss it uh, what kind of damage is done by uh, plant hoppers but primarily they accelerate the leaf senescence or drying of leaves stand reducer means they reduce the population uh, case worm or army worms they cut the plant and reduce the population kal chutti nahi hai maine chutti lag galti mere ki to chalo kal ka yes uh stand reducer maybe case worm or army worm and then light stealers light stealers means they take out again certain part of the leaves and they the other kind of colors come means for example gandhi bug or some other insect they leave their excreta on the leaves and then you get some uh, saprophytic fungus growth and then uh, the color of the leaf is discolored it will not remain green it can become brown or black then uh, light stealers so those kind of insects are also there light stealers and then photosynthetic rate reducers like wall maggot wall maggot cut the leaves and stem borers stem borers also they they reduce the number of leaves slowing the rate of carbon uptake so photosynthetic rate reducers are also there assimilate sappers the suck the sap sap of the plant from stem or leaves or from panicles so it includes your plant hoppers leaf hoppers aphids seed bugs so sucking type of pest are assimilate sappers and turgor reducers root feeders are turgor reducers and pests such as stem borers that affect xylem and phloem flowing to root reserves so you can see variety of damages are being done by insect some remove the green area some put some other colors and some suck the sap some may suck the juice of the leaves or juice from the panicle panicle or uh, spikelets so you can see this uh, uh, picture of the rice plant and you see all the plant parts all the morphological plant parts whether it is root or it is shoot or tillers or leaves or panicle all are affected or damaged by some insects at one point of time or the other so in root you can find root aphids root aphids sometimes occur or root you can have termites also and in stem you have six five or six different kind of stem borers and then you can have leaf insects like leaf roller or case worm and grain you have gandhi bug so number of insects can be there and each part of the rice can be damaged by insects so the world rice crop is attacked by more than 100 species of insects large number of insects affect the a uh, rice crop but 20 of them can cause economic damage so 20 are more important 
and insect pests that can cause significant yield load losses are stem borers, leaf hoppers, and plant hoppers, and gall midges, gall midge, we'll see gall midge, grain sucking bug, bug, and average yield loss due to various insect pests in Asia is about 20%. So this is average value. However, damage can vary from say 0% or say 5% to 100%. Sometimes there can be 100% damage in a particular area or in a particular field. Uh, as you remember some historical diseases like your leaf spot, Yesterday we discussed, so Bengal, Bengal famine was there. So this 20% uh, value is just approximate value. These kind of values change from year to year, from place to place. So never trust these values. Some people say 20 to 30%, some say 50%. There is no guarantee that uh, uh, to give the extent of damage. It can be any extent. Now we start with the stem borer. Six species of stem borer are there, but yellow stem borer is most common and most damaging in India and in Asia. It is known as a yellow stem borer because on the right side, extreme right, you can see uh, the adult, adult of a stem borer. So it has somewhat yellow color. Therefore name yellow stem borer and uh, there can be some white stem borer, stipped stem borer, gold fringed stem borer, dark headed stipped stem borer, pink stem borer. So number of borers are there, but yellow stem borer is the most common and it destroys rice plant and feed, a, feed upon tillers. It feed upon tillers, dead huts are created. Dead huts, me, huts means a drying of central tiller or part of the tillers, central part of the tiller is damaged by it at vegetative stage. And during a reproductive stage or during after heading, it can give you white heads. So actually it disconnect the panicle, it disconnect the panicle or, or uh, it, can, it, it disconnect the panicle from the main stem. So white heads are produced, you can see on the right side picture. Now you can see the differences in dead hearts and white head. In dead hearts, caterpillar bore into central shoot of paddy seedlings and tiller causes its drying or drying up of central shoot. So this is your dead heart and white heads or white panicles, uh, these uh, are actually on the lower side they have been disconnected by the insect. And if you pull it out, the panicle will be easily pulled. Panicle will be easily pulled out. And these grains are white in color. And there are no filled grains. They are empty. They look to be white or silver color panicles. And they are empty. As seedlings also. Spikelets are empty, white head due to stem borer. And other stem borers will also produce similar kind of symptoms or damage. Now, uh, it occurrence bore at the base of the plant. So actually uh, it lays down eggs on the leaves and they eggs hatch. After hatching larvae or caterpillar is produced and that caterpillar can enter the stem of the rice through the leaf sheath through the first, first it will come to leaf sheath. It will pierce into the leaf sheath and enter the stem. And there it will start feeding, feeding and do the damage. And it can disconnect the upper part, upper part of the stem. Aquatic environments, continuous flooding and high nitrogen field are the area of its occurrence, management, resistant varieties, hand pick and destroy egg masses. Sometimes egg masses can be easily seen by naked eyes and they can be collected, but it needs your lot of labor. Before transplanting, cut the leaf top. So one third of the leaf top can be cut when you uproot the seedling. 
uh, one, th one third length of the seedling can be cut from the top. So by, uh, it is part of I uh, integrated stem borer management because certain eggs may be there in the leaf tips. So if you cut those leaf tips, then eggs can be removed. Proper timing of planting and synchronous planting apply nitrogen fertilizer in spirit. So these are the management strategies for a stem borer. And so far chemical control is concerned. I will discuss chemical control at the end of this lecture. So I will give you a list of the insecticides that can be used to control insects, these insect pests. Now rice leaf folder, this is next insect of the rice crop. And many times, it does not do uh, a great damage. The damage is very small or very insignificant, but under certain circumstances in say four or five years, uh, it, can, it can become severe also, but it is not very common, very problematic insect. So rice leaf folder, the other name is life, rice leaf roller, R-O-L-L-E-R, -L -L -E roller. It folds a rice leaf, around themselves feed insides. So it comes to the rice leaf and you have margins, margins of the leaf. You can see in this picture, in this picture, this larvae or caterpillar. So you can see it is stitching, is stitching the two ends of uh, margins and it, it will continuously do this and it will remain inside this uh, tunnel. Tunnel, it will make kind of tunnel and it will remain in the tunnel and eat the contents or eat the tissues, green tissues there. So the larvae you are seeing here is actually fully grown larvae. So it is all, uh, going to be uh, to uh, pupate. It will, next to, uh, it will enter the next stage of pupa. So right now it is healthy and it has almost completed uh, its caterpillar stage. So they are initially very smaller in size, and then they cover in this uh, tunnel, make the tunnel, and then they live there, and then they eat the things and become healthy and, and increase in growth there. So what it, it does, attach the leaf margins together with silk strands. So in this picture, larvae picture, you are seeing it, it is just like silk strands create longitudinal white and transparent streak on the blade. So when they are in the tunnel, they eat the chlorophyll and the, uh, what is left is the white color, white streak, transparent streaks, affect flag leaf and next two youngest leaves in each tiller. So it starts from the top of the uh, plant, the, the topmost leaves are affected, but when the infestation continues, if it is reaching to the dangerous level, then whole plant will be affected. All the leaves of the plant will be affected by this insect. Now you can see from the left side, it is making tunnel and how the leaf looks. And see this bigger size picture. So bigger size picture, it was severe infestation of rice leaf roller or folder in the rice crop. And you can see all the, all the parts of leaf have, leaves have become white. And uh, there, is, there will not be any photosynthesis in these white leaves. So yield will be drastically reduced because of a reduction in grain filling also. So sometimes it can be, become very dangerous or damaging disease. Uh, and many times it looks that somebody has painted white color in the paddy field with lime. So symptoms look like that somebody has painted or whitewashed the paddy field with, with the lime. And on the right side, you can see the pupa. So color of the pupa is reddish, reddish orange or reddish brown, you can say reddish brown color, color of the pupa. So sometimes what farmers think that this is the insect. So they, because they, they, they cannot see uh, these uh, caterpillars easily because they are covered inside the tunnel or in the leaf, but they can easily see these pupa, they are attached to stem or leaves of the rice. 
So in the rice folder infested fields, you will find pupa there, which are red. Sometimes you get a quiz question. What is the color of the rice leaf folder uh, pupa? So it is, uh, you can say red or reddish brown. Now a rice folder, rice leaf folder occurs when you use heavy use of fertilizer. So you see all the insect insects, their damage or their population increase when you use heavy use of fertilizer. So one point is almost common to all the insects. Expanded rice areas with irrigation systems. Multiple rice cropping means year after year. So there, there can be carryover of the uh, insect. Insecticide induced resurgences. Sometimes uh, particular insecticide is used year after year without any rotation of insecticide. So some problems can come because of insecticide use. And it is more in rainy seasons. Management resistant varieties, flood and plow field after harvesting. Remove grassy weeds means clean cultivation, cleaning of the field, reduce density of planting and use balanced fertilizer rates. Anything you want to ask from rice folder or stem borer? Any doubt in rice stem borer or yellow stem borer and rice leaf folder or rice leaf roller? Now we go to uh, next plant hoppers. So plant hoppers are very, very important insect pest of rice crop. And there are variety of plant hoppers like stem borers. So the most important one is brown plant hopper. So its name brown is coming from the color of the adult, color of the adult or nymph. Uh, hoppers, I think you know a little bit of entomology. These hoppers, hoppers have uh, different stages than your Lepidopterus insects. So they have uh, three important stages, I think egg, a nymph and adult. So these hoppers, a nymph and adult have brown color, therefore it is brown plant hopper. Other is white bag plant hopper. So its back is white. Uh, and there can be some more hoppers like green leaf hopper, and uh, some other leaf hoppers. N a number of leaf hoppers are there. Uh, the leaves initially turn orange yellow. Initially, the leaves will turn orange yellow. Later, become, becoming dry, brown and dry, which is known as hopper bud. A brown plant hopper also trans transmits rice red stunt and rice gra grassy stunt diseases. Means it transmits certain viruses and complete loss of rice plant. It can happen. It occurs in rain fed and irrigated wetlands, continuous submergence conditions and closed canopy of rice, densely seeded crops, excessive use of nitrogen, early season insecticide spraying. I think uh, you know the disease triangle and disease triangle is, what is made up of disease triangle? What are the part of disease triangle? Can you tell me? Host pathogen and environment. Host pathogen and environment. Can you think of uh, insect pest uh, triangle? Can we make insect pest triangle also? Is it possible? Can you think from that line? Why for diseases? Why that cannot be applied to insects? Yes, it can be applied. Because you see, the, there are two things. One is host, other is uh, your pest, insect pest. And there is interaction of environment to both. Environment will interact with your host. If environment is making your host weak, then it will become susceptible. If your environment is such that it is making your host uh, strong and healthy, then it can resist or it can, be, it can remain least affected by the insect pest. And because I think other way around now, if your pest environment is making the insect pest weaker, 
it is not giving favorable conditions for uh, insect growth or development of insects, then the insect population or effect will be less. If the environment fav favors the, the uh, growth or multiplication of the insect pests, then it will give you more disease. So we can relate environment here also. So you will get certain conditions when host is, if host is uh, weak, host is not uh, strong enough, maybe because of genetics or some other reason or environmental reason, if host is not in, uh, strong, then it can be affected even by lower population of the insect pests. And what will happen if insect is getting favorable condition for its growth and plant is getting unfavorable condition for its growth, then I think crop will be wiped out. So just think over it, uh, think over it. It may not be there in entomology book, but we can uh, think it. Uh, continuous submerged conditions can increase the incidence of plant hoppers. Closed canopy of the rice, densely seeded crops, excessive use of nitrogen, early season insecticide spill. So under these circumstances, this plant hoppers or brown plant hopper can occur. And I can tell you that if you ask me uh, which one is the most destructive insect pest of rice, the answer will be brown plant hopper. It is the most destructive uh, insect pest of rice. There can be, depending upon situ situation, but overall, from Indian point of view, it is most destructive insect pest of rice. There can be some other insects also. So you can see uh, in this picture, uh, brown, uh, the, the color of the insect is brown, and you cannot distinguish here uh, who is uh, adult or who is nymph. Both are there, nymph and adult, both are sitting on the stem, particularly on the lower part of the stem. They sit and they suck the sap. They suck the sap of the stem, and then stem become weaker, stem become weaker. And if it is at heading stage, then stem will not be able to bear the weight of the panicle. And then lodging can occur. And if the uh, stem has become weaker and dried up, then your crop will dry. If grain filling has not started and you get this brown, brown plant of hopper attack, then the uh, plants will uh, dry up before getting any uh, grain filling. So it can be many dangerous uh, insect, it can be dangerous insect uh, of rice. Now you see, <clears throat> this is the, 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 the plant was green. This plant was green, but attack due to attack of brown plant hopper. Can you see certain insects there? few insects are sitting, but rest have gone. Once they suck the sap, once the sap is over, they migrate to other plants, they migrate to other field, or they may die also. So here it was damaged by them, but you cannot see them now, very few may be there. And uh, the, the stem is totally dried, the leaves are totally dried. So they are looking like burnt, somebody has burnt them. So field can look like this uh, in case of brown plant hopper. You can see uh, the incidence. So you may not have good filling, good grain filling here. Now you see this is a typical symptom of hopper burn. So hopper burn is your brown plant hopper burn here. And it is just like somebody has put the fire in the paddy field. And you can see certain uh, tillers or certain shoot are green. They remain unaffected, but most of them uh, are affected and it is in patches. The symptoms are coming in patches. They are known as hopper burns. Means burning or burnt plant uh, due to hopper, brown plant hopper. So management, remove the weeds, avoid indiscriminate use of insecticide, Resistant variety, light traps. Light traps could be optioned. Uh, flood the seed bed, means put some more water in the seed bed. Sweep small seed bed. Natural enemies 
can be enhanced, can be increased, like striders, mirrored bugs, spiders, and various egg parasitoids. Some options are available uh, for biological control and insecticides, of course. I will give you a list later. Now, like your brown plant hopper, you get green leaf hopper, and you know it transmits the Tungro virus and feed by extracting plant sap. It is sucking pest, yellow dwarf, yellow orange leaf initially, stunted plants and reduce vigor, reduce number of productive tillers, and withering or complete plant drying. It occurs uh, when staggered planting encourages population growth. Staggered planting means you have done planting today uh, in uh, one particular part of the field. And in the next part of the field, you will go after one week or with, with, the, with the duration of four or five days interval. Uh, Rain-fed and irrigated wetland environment management, same kind of management what you have seen in uh, brown plant hopper, resistant varieties, plant early light traps. They are very common uh, kind of management options. They are not very specific, some general. Now, next is your zigzag, zigzag leaf hopper. Drying of leaf tips, whole leaves. You can see the, the pattern kind of color pattern on its back. So it is somewhat zigzag, looking to be zigzag pattern. Therefore, the name zigzag leaf hopper. Uh, grassy weeds and volunteer rice in fallow fields attract the zigzag leaf hopper. Seed beds and weeds between planting seasons. Managements, same as in case of brown plant hopper. So three hoppers we discussed. Now next important pest is Rice Gandhi bug. It is called as Gandhi bug when, because when you move around the field, move around the field, a bad smell or odor comes. Therefore, Gandhi means smelly. And it is bug, maybe uh, from the order Hemiptera. What is the order of Gandhi bug? Hemiptera. Hemiptera. So, Hemipterous <laughs> insect, uh, I think they release some honeydew. Honey yes, sir. The name of their excreta, I think. Yes, sir. Which catches certain saprophytic fungi, and and because of that, I think smell comes. What is the reason for this odor? No, sir. The smell comes uh, when the uh, insects are disturbed. Then. Uh, okay. So, वो खुद को बचाने के लिए ये कोई chemical they shoot in the hand. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but other students can also uh, give their views. Actually, I tried it. Okay. Okay, we'll I, confirm it. But so far, I know uh, as on today that it is because of that honeydew, uh, that excreta, the smell comes. But we can look no, sir. to the right. Because uh, honeydew aphid me, uh, aphid ke attack se bhi aata hai. Yeah. 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 Okay, so Gandhi Buck, Egbar Mane, Gandhi Bako Pakrata, so work a bad smell are it here, Kuch Panikaja Sakuch Merumli Malagai, fair a bad smell on a legacy. Okay, agreed. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Hani Gandhi Vagne, Gandhi Bak Kuch Chortai, Isiliuska Namhe Gandhi, Gandhi means smell in Bengali word, Gondo, Gondo, take a Gandhi. Okay, agreed, fully agreed. Yes, they have more dried land. And honeydew secretion, it's secreted by plant sucking insect. They, they in sucks generally more than their need plant sap and they excrete that part and that forms plant and that forms honeydew. It is generally can be seen of overall hemiptera order. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. So I am corrected. Today I am corrected. I was thinking other otherwise. Thank you. Management. Management is your remove weeds from field. You can see in case of all the insects, this is a common point. So you can remember certain common points as a student. So at least uh, three, four points are common in the management of all. So it becomes easier when you uh, write your answers in your examinations. So then really it becomes much easier if you remain 
remember certain general points and then one or two specific point then you no need to uh, remember uh, everything capturing rice bug by net it is possible to capture the rice bug biological control by spider wasp and grasshoppers etc i think grasshopper if you act as a uh, biological control agent it will eat itself it can become pest then so you can remove this gra grasshopper from here now black bug so black bug uh, is feeds on plant from seedling to maturity removes the sap of the plant it is also sucker, sucks the sap browning of leaves is stunting in plants reduce tiller number and uh, formation of white heads weaken the plant preventing them from uh, producing seeds occurrence in rain fed and irrigated wetlands they are everywhere you can see this picture i think this is egg mass of this bug and uh, picture number 2 you can see their numbers in this case they are in very large numbers this population of these bug black bugs Uh, management is resistant varieties removing of the weeds plant rice varieties of the same maturity date uh, biological control agents flood the field causes and so many options are there so now i am ending we, i will we'll go to the link 2 and we will meet after 3 minutes about 3 minutes okay sir okay the record now we come to army worm now question comes that why it is called as army worm can anyone tell me army worm senic kit why it is called as army worm is it you can see the color color of the insect larvae so color is like army uniform therefore we can call it army worm what do you think why we call it army worm sir they are the voracious feeders they attack in the field in a, a group not a single uh, insect Very so good. that's why it's called army <laughs> yeah very yes, they migrate in large numbers so i was just joking in the beginning uh, you said uh, replied the correct answer so it is not because of color of caterpillar <laughs> don't cut me that part and and uh, send to people that sir is saying it is because of this so if you want to send send the whole uh, with uh, the whole video without cut anyway so army worm there are three species and it is written here swarming caterpillar means they are in group common cutworm rice ear cutting uh, caterpillar so they can cut the ear also cutting of leaves they can cut the leaves also uh, young seedlings and panicle they can cut any part of the rice plant and feed in the upper portion of the rice canopy occurrence 15 degree centigrade temperature periods of drought followed by heavy rains and they are mostly nocturnal in dry land fields army worm pupa can be found in the soil or at the base of the rice plants in wetland they pupate on plants or on grassy areas now you can see the damage being done by this uh, army worm on the rice plants and you can see damage more clearly that is why they are in large numbers and group therefore uh, uh, you can see that kind of damage that has been done by them they have cut the everything of the rice plant and and whenever they come they come like this and they damage the crop so now you cannot say 10% losses of the crop there can be 100% losses of the crop now see another picture this army worms so management is almost same flooding seed beds uh, same kind of uh, management options what you have seen for others rice skipper another insect removal of uh, leaf tissues 
raw leaves make a protected chamber. So this is not very important insect. Now rice thrips, they are very minor uh, insect pest of rice. Leaf curling and discoloration infest the rice plant during the seedling stage or two weeks after early sowing. Uh, management use resistant varieties, flood to the submergence and biological control agents. So just you can remember, okay, rice thrips is a insect and I'll tell you chemical control, mealybug. So these mealybug can come to any crop. They are not very choosy. So in rice also, they have come uh, this mealybug. So one day I have seen uh, mealybugs in sugarcane also. I was expecting that sugarcane does not have a mealybug as insect. Then I found that mealybug can come to sugarcane also. So in rice, you can see mealybug can be uh, an insect, but it, it, it is not having that much uh, infestation, that much big problem. But whenever it comes, removes plant sap by sucking, curling of leaves and building of plants, yellowing and stunting of crop and heavy losses to the crops. So it is not that big deal, this mealybug. Mall cricket, cricket can also damage rice plant, particularly in early stages. So feeds on seeds, tillers, and roots, heavy damage to roots and basal parts of plants, cut seedlings at base, poor growth of seedlings. So mall cricket can be a pest sometimes, particularly during early growth stage. Now cutworm. Cutworm is looking like your uh, army worm. It is just like looking color, uh, same as army worm, you can see. Uh, young caterpillars eat the soft tissues. Fully grown cutworms can consume the entire plant. Damage during the seedling stage by cutworm. Uh, cutworm you also get in, uh, in chickpea. Chickpea also you get cutworm. Rice case worm. This is important uh, pest like army worm and cut off leaf tips to make leaf cases. So it uh, cuts the rice leaves starting from the uh, top into pieces or cases. Severe defoliation, stunted growth, cut leaves at right angles. Uh, leaves left uh, with papery upper epidermis. Skeletonized leaf tissues appear ladder like. So, overall, many times it can be very uh, devastating insect, this rice case worm. And management is roughly the same. So, you can see it is cutting, cutting the leaves and other parts of the plant, and it is cutting them to size, cutting them, them to size. That is your case. So caterpillar feed on green tissues of the leaves and leave, be, leaves become whitish papery. You can see on the right side, whitish papery, tubular cases around the tillers by cutting the apical portion of leaves, floating of tubular cases on the water, cutting off leaf tips to make leaf cases. So grasshopper and locusts, I think they are kind of multifagous or insect, they can eat any crop, any plant, cut out areas on leaves and panicles, feed on leaf margins, and serious damage can be done by grasshoppers also. Rice gall midge, this is important insect pest of rice, and maggot feeds at the base of the shoot. So maggots are the uh, kind of larvae of this insect. It looks like mosquito, you can see in picture. Formation of a tube-like gall that is similar to onion leaf uh, or silver shoot. You can see these are typical characteristics or symptom of rice gall midge. And in your quiz exam, you get this question, uh, which insect causes onion leaf or silver shoot? So answer is rice gall midge. Infested tillers produce no panicle. Management use resistant varieties, plowed at all, or cleaning or biological control. You can see this picture, you can find onion leaf symptoms 
and you can also see some silver shoot gauze. Gauze is a small, a kind of a smaller swellings on the base, and then the leaves are curled and they are rolled up and look like onion leaves. Rice hispa, you can see this hispa is looking like a bug. So it scrapes the upper surface of leaf blades, leaving only the lower epidermis. This hispa has become very important insect pest in Himachal Pradesh. This hispa is getting some uh, notice in Himachal Pradesh, rice hispa. It scrapes the upper surface of leaf blades leaving only the lower is epidermis. So actually it, 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 you can see the whitening, whitening of the leaves. So these are the scrape, kind of scraping the surface. Tunnels through the leaf tissues, irregular transparent white patches, uh, whitish and membranous leaves infest large areas and cause yield dose of up to 20%. Alternate hosts are grassy weeds, <clears throat> heavy fertilized field, heavy rains, rain fed and irrigated uh, wetlands. You can see sometimes it is in very large numbers in the paddy fields and uh, what can be done? Avoid over fertilizing, clipping and burying shoot in the mud, biological control and some insecticide can be used. So root effort can also come and they can do some damage to the roots. As the name suggests, and effort, you know, they suck the sap. So some problems can be there due to root effort. And root effort is also there in, in, in wheat. In wheat, you can find root damage by root effort some, sometimes. Ants can also do some damage to rice. Now we come to the chemical control of important insect pests. So I, I put it in the tabular form so that you need not to uh, remember so many, so name of so many insecticide because it confuses the students. And it is not easy to remember 30 different uh, insecticides or uh, their concentration, their doses. It is tough job. So when we were a student, uh, so our teacher used to tell us that whenever somebody asks you, irrespective of the crop, irrespective of the insect, if you forget which insecticide should I tell you, uh, then you in, in our time, then you could say indosulfan. So indosulfan uh, was very widely used insecticide. And if you are in interview and somebody asks you, then if you uh, uh, say answer indosulfan 1.25 liter, and then that answer would be correct in most of the situation. Similarly, for fungicide, we used to say uh, dithenam pethalis 45. So likewise, you need to remember certain common insecticides. Of course, uh, one insecticide cannot be uh, recommended for all the insects but it can be recommended for many, many insects. Like in case of rice, this carbofuran. Carbofuran can be recommended for many insects. It is a 3G, uh, 3G means 3% granules at the rate of 30 kg per hectare. Or 48 can be used at the rate of 10 gram, uh, 10G, 12.48, uh, and carbofuran are the same or different? Are they different? For it and carbon? Different, different, sir. Oh, okay. carbofuran name is furadone. Okay, okay. So carbofuran is furadone, and your for it is different, but they are fumigant kind of uh, insecticide, I think, granules. And for it, tangy, because here you have 10%. So rate of application is about 12.5 kg per hectare. So a thing is that carbofuran, if you uh, remember exact insecticide, that is fine. But sometimes if you forget and what to say, then you, if you say carbofuran 3G, it can be used to control stem borer. It can be used to control um, 
leaf folder. It can be told about uh, hoppers, all kind of hoppers. Uh, carbofuran can be suggested. Carbofuran can be suggested for um, nematode, rice nematodes. So at least uh, one name you can remember this carbofuran. It can be used to control many insects. Uh, rate is 3G and at most you can say 25 to 30 kg. Range is necessary because depending upon the insect population and kind of soil, there are so many factors which affect the, the dose. So better to write 25 to 30 kg because in agronomy, we uh, give answer in range. <laughs> range. So you give it 25 to 30 kg carbofuran. Similarly, uh, one more insecticide is there, which is cartep, cartep hydrochloride. Cartep hydrochloride, that is also granular insecticide, which comes in 4G. So for cartep hydrochloride, the dose is 25 kg per hectare. And this cartep hydrochloride can be used to control your stem borer and leaf folder. Leaf folder and stem borer can be controlled by this. So other uh, common insecticide you can remember is your chlorpyrifos. Chlorpyrifos. So in our time, it was, uh, it was endosulfan, which is banned. Endosulfan is banned. But in your time, you can remember chlorpyrifos. Better to tell the exact insecticide whenever question is asked or whenever you want to uh, say about it. But whenever you forget, whenever you forget the insecticide name or doses and this and that, then uh, it will work. This chlorpyrifos 2 ml per liter water, apply 500 liter of solution. So it can work. Similarly, there is one more insecticide, which is uh, which is imeda clopid. Imeda clopid. Imeda clopid can be applied at uh, one ml per three liter of water. One ml per three liter of water and 500 solution for one hectare. So imeda clopid is wide uh, is widely used and it can control variety of insect in variety of crops. So this is the way to learn a uh, name of the insecticide, at least four or five insecticide you can remember. Like in case of your herbicides, if you don't remember any herbicide, you can tell pendimethalin for the timing. Pre-emergence, it can be used in any crop, whether it is cereal, oil seed, pulses, sugarcane, whatever you are, or rice. So you can use this Pandimethalin in direct seeded rice. So we, we need to develop some fundamental uh, things or remember some fundamental things in our mind. So here your carbofuran now, same can be used to control white backed and you can read your ETL, ETL economic threshold levels. Uh, this is given here. Then your green leaf hopper, almost similar kind of control is there. For rice mealybug and paddy aphid, you got phenytrothion or dimethoate. The dimethoate is also good. It can be used. And for yellow stem borer, you can use carbofuran and you can also use melathion, 50 EC 0.1%. Uh, and for Rice Gandhibug. Rice Gandhibug, you can use Carbaril or Melathion 25 to 30 kg per hectare. So dusting is better to control Rice Gandhibug. Dusting or dust kind of pesticide are better or insecticide are better. So this completes the uh, insect pest management and I can stop the recording.